Hello and welcome to Unfathomable Crimes. Today's episode is of a serial killer that has been arrested in Bangkok on Tuesday the 25th of April. Now, although it is not unusual, it is rare to have female serial killers. And that is today's story. This is of a serial killer who is alleged to have used cyanide in killing her victims. There were up to 14 victims, one of which who survived, but at this time there are only 10 charges being brought, seven which are premeditated murder. I'm going to apologise ahead of time for my pronunciation on any of the names throughout this story, as it is a story coming out of Thailand. So Surat Rangzawirthapan is the name of the woman who has been arrested for these crimes. And she was pregnant at the time of her arrest. I think she is 24 weeks pregnant. Am Cyanide faces multiple murder charges. One of the interesting things about this case is that her husband is actually a senior police officer and two of the victims are his colleagues. It is not in any way being said that he is a known of these murders or had any information that she was doing these things. And at this point, it is all still alleged and she is innocent until proven guilty. With the evidence we are going to go through today, it is not looking good for Surat. And she does seem to have ties to all of these victims. A detained pregnant woman dubbed Am Cyanide is facing 10 charges, mostly for premeditated murder, as police continued with their investigation into numerous fatalities suspected to be linked with cyanide poisoning. Police Colonel Anik, Deputy Commander of the Crime Suppression Division, on late Saturday night elaborated on the arrest warrants against Sarat Rangsaworth upon. Seven of the warrants were based on charges of premeditated murder in cases ranging from late 2020 to as recently as this month. Now, that is a very short time frame for her to commit these murders, bearing in mind it could be up to 13 people who have been killed. That's one, three, 13 people, with one that managed to recuperate from the poisoning. But the reason I find it even more shocking is that during this time frame, obviously Thailand and the rest of the world were still facing lockdowns, restrictions. So these murders would have been happening very close together at opportune times for her, if she is the alleged killer. Seven warrants on suspected premeditated murder concerned the deaths of a woman, Darane, that was found dead in Nakhon Pathom province on December 13, 2020. Now, this is the first alleged victim, and the police will be looking into why did it start then. A man, Surat Tarafap, in Kanchanaburi. Another woman, Kanaka Twade Charat, in Ratchaburi on January 6, 2021. A policewoman, and this is one of the victims that is alleged to be a colleague of her husband, Police Captain Kanda, in Nakum Pathom on August 10, 2022. A female teacher, Manarat Pojanat, in Nakom Pathom on, December, on September 10th, 2022. Another female teacher, Pusade Sambunmi, in Nakom Pathom on November 2022. And a policewoman, Police Major Nipa Senchan, in Nakom Pathom on April 1st this year. And that is the other person who is a colleague of her husband. Miss Sarah Rat was also warranted for the alleged murder of another woman, Ros Jirin Nilhoy, in Samut Sakon on August 10th, 2022, and the alleged attempted premeditated murder of another woman, Katima Pasade, in Kanchanaburi, and alleged theft relating to the death of a woman, Siri Porn Kanwong, in Ratchaburi on April 14th this year. And in the case of Kantima, she survived the poisoning and managed to make her way to the doctor shortly after having a meal with um, Sarah Rat, and the doctor detected cyanide in her bloodstream. The thing that made her too scared to go forward to police was the fact that Sarah Rat's husband was a senior police official, and she wasn't sure that she would be believed or if it would be covered up, so she just kept quiet. But after news broke of Sararat's arrest, 
she felt able to come forward and give her story. And this is where the police are starting to look into more murders, um, more suspicious deaths around the time that Sarah Ratt was either with this individual or, or shared a meal with this individual. Police Colonel Annick said investigators were looking into lending groups that might involve Miss Sarah Ratt because many of the deceased each transferred money in five to six digits amounts to her before their deaths. So the theory will be that she's borrowing money off these people and then she is poisoning them so that she doesn't have to pay them back. Now, five to six digits amount is quite a high amount in Thailand and this, this would be a way to take pressure off her on paying these people back if she has loaned high amounts of money from them. He said the suspect abused her victim's trust and lured them into making merit and having meals with her. He added that the case involved 14 deaths and one survivor. The 36-year-old suspect, a native of Kanchanaburi province, nicknamed Am, was dubbed Am Cyanide after police found traces of cyanide in the most recent dead body that of Sirapon, and in the suspect's vehicle in a probe into what is believed to be the serial killings. So they've found the cyanide in the body of the latest victim. They also have the cyanide in, or it'll be on her doctor's records, but the cyanide of the woman who survived the poisoning. And they've also been able to find cyanide in Miss Surratt's uh, uh, personal property, which is her car. So that ties her into at least having access to cyanide or having it on her person at one point. Miss Sarah Ratt, who was four months pregnant, was arrested at the government complex on Chang Wathabham Road in Bangkok on Tuesday. She's currently detained at the Central Women's Correctional Institute. So a very unusual case for police to go over in Bangkok, especially with her husband being a senior official. Is he gonna be implicated in the crimes? Is he gonna be aware of what she has been doing? The money issues surrounding the family, clearly she's married and her husband has a good job. She has a baby on the way, but these murders predate her being pregnant and that wouldn't be a justifiable reason as to why you would need extra money, especially with your husband having a high profile senior position at the police service. So we'll continue to follow this case because it will be interesting to see how far this goes back. And will they be able to link the other bodies to her? One of the unfortunate things about this case is if the victims at the time didn't have a toxicology report done on them, they will not be able to detect cyanide in these bodies, even if they were to be exhumed. Cyanide only lasts on bodies or within the system for two days prior to death. So they won't be able to obtain that information. And the only way they will be able to tie these crimes to her is if they can prove a reason for her to murder these individuals. So like I say, it's all innocent until proven guilty at this point. But with the, all the victims having the, the common link of lending money to Miss Sararat and all of them having unsuspecting deaths, these were all sudden deaths. These were all people who were not ill. And also the link of the cyanide within her vehicle and also on the latest victim. We also have the individual who survived the poisoning and she could come forward to testify to say what happened during the meal that she had with her, why she was scared to come forward. It is interesting that that victim was scared to come forward because of her husband's position being a senior police official. Does that link him to the crimes? So as I said, we'll, we'll follow this case going forward. Will more victims become apparent? It's only too soon to tell. Thank you for joining me for today's episode and until next time. Bye guys.